unbelief begs for, begs for the glory and the approval of man and the world and it balks at the glory of God. And the more religious you are, the more experience you've had, the better you get at cloaking that. And that's why we have this passage. Because God's saying, oh yeah, they believed. They said all the right stuff. They had the resumes. But when it came down to whether or not they would live sacrificially, surrendered, and perhaps even to the point of losing all that they cherished. They chose the world rather than to worship Jesus the King. And what wouldn't they do? They wouldn't confess Jesus as Lord with their mouth. So you're going to count that? You better believe it. Why? Because God's word does. Romans 10, 9, this is the verse at the back of my business card. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, if and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What's that mean? If you don't, you won't. That's what it means. That's the conditional promise and condition of Romans 10, 9. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. If you don't, you won't. They don't, so they won't. And that's the point like the rich young ruler. It's to get us into this refining place of understanding. You can't be religious enough to be saved. You can't know enough facts to take the place of your faith. And the fruit, the real fruit of saving faith, well, friends, it's the life lived. You cannot come and say, well, I was so convicted. Oh, that that had such an impact on me. If it didn't change you, it didn't impact you. What you've done is you've learned to manage conviction. That's not what God calls you and me to. He calls us to surrendered ambassadorships, to be the salt and the light of the world, to be the aroma of Christ into the nostrils of a lost world. If you're religious and not yet in relationship and maybe you're holding on to good stuff that you've turned into God stuff, I call you to repent and to believe. Unbelief, unbelief kills. Eternal. And I hope looking at 20 different facets of unbelief this morning that you at least have a better handle on what it looks like, if not understand what it is. Perhaps the most poignant part for me is to see where the passage closes amongst the religious experienced even the religious leadership unbelief is truly a cancerous corruption in the church if and when there is a fear or a desire more aligned with man in the world than with God and his worship then unbelief resides there. And it doesn't matter how pretty or how well-dressed it is. It's lipstick on a pig. Verse 